Okay, we're live. We're off the mark. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, good afternoon. Good evening. If you're watching this uh, later on in the week in your own time, as, as I know many of you have been. Uh, and welcome back. We are on week five of our level two course where we are looking at developing skills for employment, personal fitness and well-being as well. So skills that not only help us in a work environment or potential work environment, but also in our, um, I guess, our our quest for personal fitness and well-being and taking that into our own hands a little bit more um, and sort of building on what we've uh, done the last couple of weeks. So um, with that in mind, let's just have a little recap of what we did do last week. Um, so last week we looked, we looked mainly at um, a lot of different fitness equipment that you might come across in a circuit training session i mean you might see them in the gym anyway or in, or in a fitness environment maybe it's a little studio gym you might have come across some of them before anyway even if you've never done a circuit um but we we started building up towards um designing your own circuit cards which is which is ultimately where we're going um so having a little bit of a look at some some equipment that you might expect to see in a circuit class how you could use them um, you know, exercises that you could do with them. Is there one specific exercise that you do with this bit of kit or is there lots of different exercises you could do, you know, like a dumbbell, you can do so many different exercises. You can do overhead press, you can do a bicep curl, um, whatever it is. So a lot of equipment, we sort of, we sort of came to the conclusion last week that there, a lot of equipment is that there's not one specific way to use it, which of course is really helpful in a circuit class as well. Um, good for regressions, progressions, if you need to make things easier, harder, you know, you can just change it up. Maybe it's even hit a different muscle group depending on what the person's um, ability levels are, you know? Um, so looking at, yeah, we looked at like, like I say, different, um, different exercises that we could do um, without worrying too much about the structure because that's what we're going to start building on next week and putting things in order. Um, how are we going to actually do this circuit? So all, all we're doing really is getting getting an idea of what exercises we're going to include. So um, as it says in our workbooks, we need um, we need a minimum of six stations, and two of them need to have some fitness equipment. But again, you don't have to stop at six if you want to do more. Maybe you want to do you know up to ten. It might be a circuit that you're planning on you know doing yourself in the house, and you, your cards could be a useful little tool or a little prop to help you um to help you with that so yeah just starting to get some ideas what exercises we could do you know without worrying what order do we do them in or necessarily worrying about what your circuit cards are going to look like just yet we just you know exploring different exercises what could we do you know a skipping rope there's only really one thing you're going to do with it and that's going to be skipping like i say a resistance band you can do a lot of different um you can do a lot of different stuff with so yeah, we spent last week's session exploring different um, different fitness equipment that we could use and that you guys will be able to use in your, um, in this case, hypothetical um, circuit that we're going to be planning for your cards. So, you know, we had, we had a brief little talk about the, um, the benefits of, of circuit training and, you know, it can, it can save you time. You can get more, obviously get more into your time um, or, or, or get more more time under tension maybe you know if that's what you're looking for time time that your muscles are actually working um rather than okay i'm going to do three sets of 10 you might be looking for a certain amount of volume a certain amount of like i say time under tension um and again you know um maybe you've just done the, the, the level one last term where we looked at barriers to exercise time is a massive barrier to exercise so if we can save ourselves some time potentially exercising as a circuit, um, you know, one exercise into another, into another without really resting. Um, it can save us a lot of time. We can burn extra calories, keeps our heart rate higher. So yeah, there's lots of benefits to, um, to a circuit training session. So now you can start having to think, okay, what do I want the benefit to be from mine? Am I going to make it a leg circuit? Is it going to be abs? Is it going to be full body? Is it going to be a mixture of, you know, strength exercises and cardio alternating. And that's entirely up to you. Like I say, you can plan the circuit however you want. Um, and next week, we're going to get a, a look at some some further examples that, that learners have done in the past. Of just, again, more circuit cards, 
what they might look like, and it might give you some idea, not just how to lay yours out, but also how to um, sort of, uh, it might give you an idea of what exercises you want to do as well. You might get a little bit of inspiration there. Um, so, of course, just as a little recap, and again, before we go into today's session, um, because we're going to be doing some, some similar stuff, of course, refreshing those circuit training cards and the, the info that we might expect to see on them. Um, I guess, so the name of the exercise, we've got, you know, be it shoulder press, um, deadlift, uh, box hops, skater jumps, whatever it might be, we could be here all day. And um, the name of the exercise, um, muscles used. So what muscles you're expecting to, to use while you are doing that exercise or using that equipment. Um, you know, if it's a shoulder press, of course, it's going to be your deltoids in your shoulders. Um sit up and you know, your muscles are going to work your abs and your core a little bit um then any equipment used that you might need so you know some of the more obvious stuff might be you know it, it might be um could even be like boxing gloves boxing uh, boxing gloves at one station it's like right okay you get to the station you look at the circuit card it says you need boxing gloves or a medicine ball or whatever it is you know, you can look around and they should be there. They should be there at that station, but it just keeps you right. You know what you're looking for, even sit-ups, you know, you think there's not really any equipment, but you might get there. It might say, of course, obviously an exercise mat to lay on, but that might also be part of the progression as well. So if you were looking to make sit-ups harder and offer that as an option on your circuit card, you might say, right, okay, if you want your sit-ups to be harder, get a, get a, a dumbbell or a medicine ball or a kettlebell hold it into your chest and do your sit up that way so an easier version of that exercise might not use any equipment but you know to, to progress it to make it a little bit harder a bit more challenging you know you might look to add some weights in there as well so that might be worth putting on you know um is it is it going to be do you use the weight Regardless, do you use the weight? Should everybody use the weight or do you just use the weight if you're looking to make it a little bit more challenging for yourself? So that could go on there as well. Um, like I say, like we mentioned last week, a, a, a little brief description maybe is of how to carry out each exercise as well. So again, you know, if it's a, um, if it's a shoulder press, you know, you might want to say, okay, get your dumbbell in each hand, um, get um, up to about eye level with the elbows out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So your elbows are bent, flared out. And you want your palms at eye level. And then from there, with a dumbbell in each hand, push up and push the dumbbells together at the top. Return, pulling them apart from the top and then stop at eye level. Yeah, that would be a little description for your overhead press. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't have to be like massively complicated. It doesn't have to be like a whole paragraph, even just a couple of bullet points. Um, you know, can be really, really helpful. And especially if you're the instructor delivering the session, if you can have a couple of bullet points on that stops somebody needing your attention. Oh, Robert, like what was I supposed to be doing on here? How do I do this exercise? You know, that means you can be elsewhere, focusing on other people on their technique, making sure the technique's okay, pushing them to progress if they, you know, making it look too easy, maybe look to regress it if it looks a bit heavy for them or a bit much and they haven't, maybe sort of thought to like sort of just knock it back like a step um, or just knock the intensity down a little bit. So that's where you as the instructor can be a lot more, um, a lot more beneficial. Um, and it helps keep the class going as well. It helps keep everything nice and organized. There's no stop and start in, you know, if you didn't, if there was no description on there, how to carry out an exercise, you know, you might say, right, everybody off you go, set the timer away. And you might have five out of the 10 stations as people stood going, I don't know how to do this. So what you either take your time one at a time and bearing in mind that you've only what, got 40 seconds to do it before you're moving on to the next thing. You haven't got time to get around everybody. So it is really helpful to have just a couple of bullet points. If that's still, you know, not enough, you might find that there's only one person that, that needs like, that extra little bit of help or that little bit of coaching. Um, or even just reminding what the exercise is because you will get it. Um, and again, if you are just the person doing the exercise, you don't necessarily need to be the instructor um, to get the benefit of these. Obviously, if you are um, just just the gym member, the client, whatever it is, you come along, you come to your station, you know, there's no description on there how to do it. You then need to fail. You then need to find the time 
you know, to, to, to pick the time to get the instructor to come and help you. you. You're potentially wasting some of your time that you that you should be working for, that you've turned up for, you know, got dressed for, um, probably even paid for as well if it's a circuit class or something like that. You don't want to be stood there going, actually, I don't know how to do this, and the instructor's too busy to come and, to come and help us. Um, so, yeah, just a couple of bullet points can go a really long way with that. Um, okay, we'd also mentioned um, health and safety considerations as well. You know, I know I briefly mentioned um, progressions and regressions earlier on, making it harder, making it easier um, when when necessary. Um, now, again, that 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 might be um, adding weight, removing weight, changing a range of motion, um, adding assistance. You know, if somebody's struggling to do a full squat. Can they just come down and sit on a chair or a stool or a bench and then stand up from there? That could be a start, you know. Um, or in some cases, you might need to change the exercise entirely. You know, you might get somebody comes along, goes to do a plank, gets a lot of pain in their lower back. You come down to your elbows, that's no better. You get them on their knees, that's no better. Sometimes you might, sometimes you do just need to change the exercise around, in which case I always just try and make sure it's an exercise that hits the same muscle group you know so i might get them to lay on their back and do some you know um bicycle abs where your elbow comes across to the opposite knee um because that takes the strain off the lower back you know but still works the abs in the same way and if you get i don't know if the microphone's picking that up the dog's snoring and he's having a little dream next to us so uh yeah if you're hearing like a little squeak that's, that's what that is there's no one claiming the windows um Okay, guys. So yeah, that was the um that, that was last week's session. By all means, go back and and um, check out that session again. You know, either either this week or in a couple of weeks' time. By all means, go back and and, and check that out again. Um, especially like I say, just to get used to that 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 fitness equipment. Um, you might even want to go and recap on some of that kit before we start putting pen to paper on your um circuit cards as well. Um, maybe it's after the day session. So, um. Of, like I said, the day session links in really closely with what we did last week. Um, so what we're going to do this week, instead of looking at um, fitness equipment and exercises that we can do with it, we're going to remove a equipment altogether and look at um, calisthenics or more simple term, I guess, body weight exercises. So exercises where you're just using your own body and your own, the own like the weight of your own body and gravity, because you're working against gravity as well the whole time. Um, and how we can use our body as, as, as well to, of course, burn calories, stimulate muscle, raise our heart rate without needing a load of fitness kit. Um, now, this might be beneficial, again, if you're planning on putting yourself together a little circuit that you can do in the house. Um, you know, lack of fitness kit has been one of the biggest barriers over the last two years. You know, gyms have been closed. Um, even places like swimming baths have been closed. Leisure centres have been closed. There's been no fitness classes in, in general. And, you know, even outdoor ones for a period. So a lot of people have just had to um, exercise using their own body weight. Now, what you might not realise is that to an extent includes walking as well, which is what I know a lot of us... Uh, did and, and, and had to resort to during, especially that first lockdown. Um, you know, I've never seen so many people out and about walking just to get some exercise in and get some steps and get some fresh air, you know, um, two, two years ago now. Um, you know, don't know, where, don't know where the time goes, but, but yeah, like everybody was um, walking a lot more. A lot of people were, 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 were walking a lot more which is, again, you're using your own body weight and you're working against gravity. Um, so all we're doing with these exercises that we're looking at today is just, you know, making those movements, maybe it's a little bit more complex, maybe it's making them a little bit more focused on one particular um, body part or muscle group rather than... Um, I guess walking's more of a cardiovascular thing, isn't it? You get your heart rate up... Um, you know, it's not working your leg muscles anywhere near as hard as a squat or a lunge or something like that. So walking is very sort of cardio, um, good fat burner as well. But it is, um, it's it's good for cardio. 
So if we want to, um, you know, develop and challenge certain muscles a little bit more, we need to um, change up those movements and, and find some new, some new movements to do. So same again, we're going to be looking at or and, and bearing in mind um, as we were to put these on your circuit training cards, name of the exercise, what muscles they use, a picture of the exercise, brief description, health and safety, and how to progress or regress again. You know, make it easier, make it harder, health and safety things that you might want to consider, check your space, um, make sure that you put weights away when you're done with them, make sure your skipping rope's not going to hit anybody as you're using it, that sort of thing. But of course, this time we've got no equipment, we're just thinking about body weight exercises. Um, okay, guys, let's get into it then and, and look at some examples. So as always, I'll be um, I'll be following along with the chat. Um, trying to, I'm just trying to make sure I've got it there. Um, yeah, I had it. There we go. Nice one. Cool. So yeah, as always, guys, I'll follow along with the chat. If anybody's got any questions about any of the exercises that we're going to look at, uh, by all means, pop them in there. If you've got questions and you're watching later on, again, just um, as always, drop me an email or, or, or um, well, email is probably the best way to do it. But if um, you're struggling with that, um, hit one of the guys up on social media, drop us a message on the old Facebook um, and that will get back to us and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully get that sorted for you as well. Um, but yeah, everybody should have my email by now. If you don't, it is in the... Um, little uh, description box below today's video where you'll also find the workout video, survey for the end of the session, and links to um, both the workbooks as well that we're using at the minute and sort of jump in between. Um, just while I'm mentioning that little description box as well, before we properly launch into the day, I may as well point out that there is, of course, a link to our um, uh, Google Drive and uh, for any extra um, supplementary learner info that you may need or, or want to check out, be it, you know, a copy of our learner handbook, um, <clears throat> learning safely online, safeguarding, what to do if you've got any concerns, queries, anything like that. That's all in that link in the description as well. And of course, last but not, not least, we've got our um, social media links in there as well. So if you want to keep up to date with what's going on with Media Savvy, either online in terms of teaching or maybe just even what's going on at Savvy Towers because there's all sorts going on at the minute. Lots to look forward to. Um, give us a little follow on there. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn as well um, for all the Media Savvy updates and news. Um, okay, guys, so that out the way, you know where to find my email. You know where to find your workbooks for the day. Let's um, get into it then. And again, maybe have a think yourself what body uh, what body weight exercises you've maybe used before, um, and potentially um, could they be replicated? Could you put them in your own session? Um, maybe you know, have you done body weight exercises and you didn't really understand what the benefit was? A good chance to have a think about our sort of training history, I, I guess, and some stuff that we've done in the past. You know, we're thinking like even um, like star jumps, stuff like that, high knees, hiccups. Uh, hiccups don't count. But things like jogging on the spot as well. Um, tuck jumps, maybe you've um, come across burpees before. Um, it's probably giving you a shiver down your spine if you, if you maybe have done. But lots and lots of bodyweight exercises we can do. Um, so why? Why, why do bodyweight exercises? Um, so one of the most important benefits um, of bodyweight exercises is its ability to improve um, your cardiovascular fitness, uh, endurance, and your muscle strength uh, all at once without needing any equipment as well. You know, there's no cost. There's no maintenance. There's no storage. Um, there's no, like I say, wear and tear and health and safety that, you know, in regards to equipment that you might need to worry about. Um, but, but the biggest ones for me are, of course, cost and, and space. Um, you know, not everybody has the money to buy their own fitness equipment. Not everybody has um, 
the it, the space to store fitness equipment and the majority of us probably fall under both of those umbrellas you know the cost and the space of where to store them you know um as i've mentioned before all of my training through lockdown has been body weight um cardio or um sort of uh, resistance bands so little don't take up much space quite cheap to invest in you know if i'd have gone out and tried to buy a load of um like a treadmill and a bike and a rower and a cross trainer, you know, I'd have had to go, I would have had to clear the living room out. I don't even have anywhere to put them all. Um, so yeah, it's just not practical. It's not practical for everybody. Um, to be honest, it's not practical for many people. Um, and of course we all know, um, cost of living and stuff like that. Usually our finances need to be prioritized elsewhere. So, um, that's where our body weight, exercise comes in um so frequently changing your position um okay keep on keeping on working without resting keeps your heart rate elevated frequently changing your position means that you keep working fresh muscles so you can keep going yeah and just to sort of elaborate on that a little bit more if i do if i'm doing press-ups i might get to 10 i might get to 20 you know these muscles are going to get tired and sooner or later, they're not going to be able to push anymore. So if I was to just stop and wait until these muscles were fresh and, and ready to go again, I've got a couple of minutes of recovery, probably get some deep breaths in. My heart rate's going to come down a little bit. Yeah. So if my heart rate's coming lower, I'm not burning as many calories. If I, however, do my press ups, and these muscles get tired, my pecs get tired, my triceps get tired, and I want to keep moving to keep my heart rate up, pick a different muscle group, jump up and do some squats. Now you're leaving your upper body alone and your legs are working. Yeah. So now while your legs are working, these muscles are recovering. And then by the time you, your leg muscles have started to tire out as well, can you get down and can you do something that works your ab muscles? And then come back to your press-ups again by which point your, your upper body's had a couple of minutes to recover, those muscles are just as fresh as they would be if you'd stopped completely because you've left them alone. Yeah, it's, hopefully that makes sense. So moving from one, one exercise to another can mean that, you know, you can keep going um, and keep your heart rate elevated while, you know, um, mus certain muscles rest as they start to get tired, which is what we're doing when we're exercising. Um, so it is, it's, bo it's body weight and it's gravity that work together to strengthen your muscles. So of course your heart rate's up, but you're getting that strengthening benefit as well. Now, if you were on a treadmill, walking, however fast you would need to, to get your heart rate as high as this, you're still not ever going to work them leg muscles as hard just from walking as you would be doing with lunges, squats, glute bridges, um, and, 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 and stuff like that as well. So that is where, that again, another benefit of, of this kind of thing over just, especially over strict cardio, you know, your heart rate's going to be up. You're going to be burning your lungs and your, uh, your lungs and your heart are getting more and more, um, efficient, um, and, and, and trained, but your, um, like I say, the body weight and gravity are not only going to help strengthen your muscles, but it actually um, improves bone density as well. Now, weightlifting does the same thing. This isn't a body weight exercise exclusive sort of thing. Um, but the, the body weight, the gravity, and when we're using equipment, the additional weight of that um, helps strengthen our muscles and our skeleton as well. It helps make our bones denser, less brittle, harder to break, and can help um, stave off early onset of um, osteoporosis yeah which is of course brittle bones and, and bones that are easier to break um so lots of benefits to body weight exercises um again you, you tend to find that a body weight exercise tends to be somewhere like like a good something good to aim towards in terms of being able to manage your own body weight you know i always thought I don't, I'm not bothered if I can't bench press hundred kilograms, you know, as long as I can do press ups against my own body weight, you know, squats with my own body weight. Can I do potentially pull ups 
with my own body weight, you know, um, without needing to add a load of kit, just getting to being able to move your own body weight and control your own body weight and your mass a little bit more um, can be really helpful and really beneficial as well, I think. Yeah, okay, Linda. So let's get into it and get a look at some potential exercises that we might um, that we might want to do or, or utilize. So for, for some of these, I've had to use um, obviously copyright images. Um, for some of these, we have actually pulled screen grabs um, from the Media Savvy workout playlist. So there will be shots of yours truly uh, demonstrating some of these exercises, which saves me jumping up and doing it now. Um, especially while I'm whining on the headphones, that wouldn't go so well. So let's have let's start having a little look through. So probably, uh, in fact, let's have a look. There we go. I'm um, trying to make it a little bit bigger so you can maybe get a little bit more detail in there. So we've got two lower body exercises here. So two two big lower body exercises as well. So what we have is a, um, a squat on the left-hand side. And we can see that the guy's got um, his feet about hip, hip width apart. So again, so bearing this sort of stuff in mind for writing our little descriptions down on our circuit cards. So your feet want to be about hip width apart. You want to keep your um, a little bit of a soft bend in your knees at all time. You don't want to like lock them out. Um, and then we can see that he's gone from a standing position to bending his knees, lowering his bum towards the floor like he's coming to sit in the chair. Um, extra importantly, he has kept his um, back nice and flat as well. So he's got his back flat. He's not arched over. Um, his upper half is still quite upright. It hasn't tilted forward. Um, and he'll have his core engaged as well. So... That's, that's essentially a squat, um, of course, needing to push through your heels to straighten your legs again and return to your starting position. So that is one squat. Yeah, so you've gone bum down, bum back up. That's your, that's one squat. Yeah. Um, he's got his arms out in front of him, and it's something that I've done from time to time. And it just can, can help keep you, um, help keep your back flat, and it can help help stop you from tipping too far forward as well. Like if those hands were out there, but pointing down towards the floor, he would know that he's tilted too far forward. So what your aim is doing is pointing your hands out straight in front of you and keeping your chin up and your chest up to match that energy as well um, while lowering the bottom half. Yeah. You're not bending over like you're coming down to touch your toes. You're lowering your bum to the floor while you keep your upper half upright. Um, so... Couple of little um, pointers there for a for a squat. In terms of making it harder, what do we think, guys? What would you naturally do? Um, what would be your first instinct if you were to, if someone said, "Too easy this, too easy this"? Can I, can you make this a little bit harder for us? Um, what might your instinct be to do? Um, normally, the big two that I normally go to were. Increase range of motion, so squat lower, yeah? Work those muscles harder across a bigger range of movement. It makes sense that, you know, if you do like a little squat and just barely bend your knees, you haven't burned as many calories as if you've come as low as this guy here. So if you come even lower, you're going to be moving through a bigger range of, move, uh, bigger range of motion as well. It makes it harder. Or you could potentially um, give them a weight to hold like I mentioned earlier on, if that's too easy, here's a kettlebell, hold it into your chest and do exactly the same thing, but of course, against that extra weight as well. And in terms of making it easier, again, you could um, you could re um, reduce the range of motion and just have them do like a half a squat, get them used to that. You could use... Um, like I mentioned earlier on, a bench or a chair and get them to come and sit on it each time and then stand up. Um, might take some of the pressure off, off their knees, especially if, they, if it's a knee problem that they're having. It's not that the squat's too hard. You know, it's, you're just asking too much of the knees. You might need to take it back a little, a little step. 
Um, and what I've used for these as well um, is, is TRX ropes, which is essentially, it's just like a rope hanging from the ceiling. So you can get a hold of it. You can do a squat. And if you get stuck, you can give, give yourself a little pull with your arms just to help you get, get up again. And at the same time, because you've got hold of the rope, even though you're in a squat, it's, it's hard to fall over. You can't really lose your balance. So it can help balance as well. So there's ways we can make a squat easier um, and and harder as well. Now, remember those TRX, those um, suspension, or that suspension system from the ceiling, because we'll use that um, or can use that to progress or regress quite a few of these exercises. So with a squat, we have got the name of the exercise, um, we've got progressions and regressions. We've got a little description of how you would do it. Um, what muscles would be used, do you think? What muscles um, are used by a squat? There's one to get you thinking. What muscles do we use when we're doing, um, when we're doing a squat? Thinking back to those main muscle groups or those main muscles in general and looking at the movement. What do we think is, uh, which muscles do you think are working the hardest right now, bearing in mind that we're working against gravity as well? What do we think? So, the same muscles really that are used when we're going upstairs, in terms of the leg anyway, in terms of the leg, of course you bend the knee and then you push through it and, and straighten it again, yeah? So in straightening that leg, we're doing the same as going up a step, really. Um, albeit coming from quite a, uh, so like quite a like a really bent knee rather than like a slight bend as you go going up a step. So he's quite low, but straightening the leg uses the same muscles regardless whether we're coming from a full range of motion or partial range of motion. We use the same muscles, just changes how hard we work them. So the muscles that we're using really are the um, quadriceps, so across the top of the thigh. They are going to work to straighten the leg out again. And, of course, the glutes, so the bum muscles as well, are going to work and contract as you come up and stand up again and, and straighten back into, into this position as well. In the bottom of a squat, your glutes are quite stretched. As you come towards the top, they are contracting, um, and you can almost get to the top of your rep and give them a little like, like, a, like a squeeze as well so those are the main muscles for um for a squat lower body quadriceps glutes different feet positionings may work hamstrings more or less um minor muscles that you're going to work are going to be your lower back to keep your back straight and your core that's doing the same thing as well but mainly we're talking um quads and glutes for a squat and while we're talking um, quads and glutes, we'll look at a lunge as well. Um, so not to complicate things and try and um, confuse things, but you can do lunges forwards and backwards. Yeah, I'm just going to recommend that if that piques your interest a little bit, jump onto a YouTube or, or a Pinterest or something like that and have a little look rather than me try and verbally explain the difference between the two of them. But um, you can do lunges forwards or backwards. Um, and they both work in the same muscles, albeit sort of at different levels. So a lunge. A lunge is um, what we're looking at on the right-hand side. So really, you're taking a step forward with one foot while leaving the other one back and planted. So you've got like a split stance going on from the side. Then you're looking to bend both knees and lower your back knee down towards the floor. Yeah, so your front knee has to bend as well, but your rear knee is the one that you're thinking about. It's down near the floor. Yeah? That's a lunge, or certainly once you have then pushed off with this front leg, come back to standing, both feet back to each other again, um, that's one lunge done. Yeah, so go from standing, foot forward, drop your, right, uh, your back knee, nice and low, and then push back up to that starting point again. That would be one lunge. You would normally then alternate, put your other leg forward and do the same, lower your, your other knee so it's nearly touching the floor. Um, so you're alternating and doing however many per leg. 
you know, if you've got a 40 second interval during this circuit that you're doing, you don't want to just do one leg. Yeah. You want to get nice and even, get them both worked. Um, so a squat works both legs at the same time. A lunge works them separately, works them individually, um, makes balancing harder as well. So you're working those stabilizing muscles a little bit more. Um, big sort of technique point when it comes to lunges, you'll notice that there's a good, what, what I like to call a stacking of the bones going on in terms of technique and in terms of form. So we've got the knee point has come down pretty much level with the ankle and is then right under the hip. Yeah, so this, this knee is not right back there. They're not stretching. Um, the knee is, is under the hip and this, the other knee is over the ankle as well. So again, you don't want this knee out here too far forward or you don't want to be, you don't want your knee back here, but your toes in the same position as well. Yeah, you want your knee over your leading foot or over your leading ankle. And then, yeah, the knee that you've lowered, you want right under your body pretty much. Um, so you're getting almost a, a 90 degrees at, at, both, at both knees. That helps you push through your heel a lot better, which gets the right muscle recruitment going on, the right muscle activation, which is, again, quadriceps. So our quads along the top of our leg and glutes again. Yeah, so glutes and quads. Um, for, for both of these exercises, really. Um, again, lunges you're going to need to balance with a little bit more. Um, but yeah, they're both really working the same muscle. Um, what you will notice is that she's got a mat down on the floor on this one. Obviously, the guy doing a squat hasn't. Um, and you would think, really, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really need a mat. Um, but what I've actually had people do before in terms of a regression and make, make things a little bit easier. I'll tell them to not worry about coming down and hovering above the floor, but I'll get them to come down and actually rest their knee on the floor. Then they're not worried about, as they're lowering into the lunge, they're not trying to put the brakes on, they're not trying to stop and stabilize and come back up. They come to the floor, rest for a second, and then push back up. That makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, so you're coming actually down to the floor each time. Again, you want to make it harder you can put, um, again, get them to hold a weight. So you're doing lunges with the weights. I would probably recommend a, a weight in each hand so they can hang nice and freely down by your side. You can go again, like a, a dumbbell, a kettlebell, a medicine ball held into your chest. Um, make them harder. I've even seen them done with a weight above the head, which makes balancing much harder as well. Um, you might do a lunge, and then while you're in a lunge, you might do a twist and bring your abs in or your core. That's another way you could look to make them lunges a little bit harder. Um, or you might look to do, um, I guess, controversial, whether it counts as a different exercise or not. You do lunges, but you jump from one into the other. So you, from that position, you jump into the air, swap your feet over, and land with them switched. Yeah, jumping lunges. Obviously, a lot more explosive, burns more calories, a lot harder and a lot more challenging for those muscles. Um, so, yeah, that's um, what, what you could call a progression and making, making lunges a little bit harder as well. So, already we can start to see, um, it, it's something that I've picked up on certainly over the years as well. When it comes to body weight exercises... Your, your glutes, so your bum and your quadriceps, so your bum and your thigh, is a lot easier to work and to activate than the hamstring is down the back of your leg. So doing lots of squats and lunges might really develop the front of your thighs and your glutes, but not so much the, um, the back of your leg as well, which can lead to imbalance and a little bit of knee pain. So in terms of circuits, I used to try and do body weight exercises for quads and glutes, but then after, straight afterwards, they would do like a, um, a hamstring exercise, but with some weights. So they might um, lay on their front, on the floor. I'm tired. 
lay on their front um, with a like a dumbbell wedged between their feet. So then lay down on your front. You've, you've got your dumbbell wedged between your feet and you're rolling your heels up um, as if you're trying to keep it, like heel, bring your heel towards your bum. So lay it on your front, heel towards your bum. If you've got, I mean, even do that without any weight, especially to start you off. That's just getting them hamstrings working. But you could do that with a weight. Maybe it's even just a little weight plate. Might be easier to grab between your feet um, and do that. Yeah. So hamstrings. There are body weight exercises out there, um, but they're certainly um, they tend to be a little bit diff- uh, a little bit more harder to instruct or to describe or to coach somebody through. So I tend to, like I say, in terms of keeping the class going, keeping everything efficient, I would do right squats, easy to sort of relatively easy to coach somebody to do. Um, That's the dog. I haven't got a motorbike next to us. Um, so yeah, I would I would try and make sure that the um the hamstrings get got worked as well, but usually using some um equipment, you know, be it a um straight legged deadlift or a sort of modified kettlebell swing, you know, that emphasize the, the hamstrings a little bit more as well. So lots and lots of um body weight stuff we can do that's gonna hit those quads and those glutes. Uh, as well so um like i say we've mentioned a little description for both of these exercises what muscles do they use how could you make them harder in terms of health and safety i would always just say check your surroundings around you before you start especially lunges because when you stood that's your starting point but you're going to be stepping forward or backwards moving into potentially somebody else's space as well so yeah just check your space um around you before you start doing any of these two um and i would certainly try um a body weight version before you start trying to add any weight um like you say you might get a bit of a twinge in your knee or something and you just know that you need to just reel it back one or knock it back just one step um okay then guys so we've looked at a couple of leg exercises let's move on um and look at some some core or Oh, in fact, this is a good chance to sort of explain the difference between abs and core because abs is literally those sick pack muscles that we that, that you either see or don't see. Um, we all have them. We all have them. It's just a case of how visible are they. Um, and truth be told, it doesn't take a great deal of bo- like, a, like a, a high percentage of body fat to start to, to, start to hide them, you know? Um, so yeah, we, we all have these abs, but they sit. Um, and again, you know, we've all seen an action man. We know where we know where on the body a six pack would be. I'm sure. So those abs uh, are literally just the the surface muscle of the outside of the sort of where you sort of core is your torso. Um, it's just that front wall, I guess. You know, if you think of your core is obviously hollow, it's got um, internal organs and, and stuff like that inside. So our core is hollow. Um, so it's that, think of it as like a room, you know, um, like your torso or your trunk. Um, it's it's one wall. It's the front side. Yeah. If you're doing a load of sit-ups and a load of crunches and stuff like that, yeah, you're working your abdominals, you're working your abs, which is what this, these people are doing here. We can see that, again, as we lay down, our abs stretch. As we sit up, they contract and squeeze. Yeah? But we just work on those abs. So abs and these muscles on the front of your stomach being really visible and really defined doesn't necessarily mean that you've got a strong core. Yeah? You might have strong abs. You might have defined abs. But there's also a lot more to your core you know we've got your pelvic floor we've got your lower back we've got your obliques there's so much that comes into your core so that's why you know odd sit-ups every now and then they're not going to hurt but in terms of strengthening your core there are there are there are better exercises out there yes sit-ups are they're good for your abs and yes abs yes they look good depend on who you ask it's subjective really i guess um 
But what we what we're really trying to benefit from is is a strong core that protects us from day to day as we're moving about, lifting things, twisting, um, doing whatever it is that we need to do in our daily life. Um, so that's where stuff like planking comes in. Planking is probably the hardest exercise I can think of where you don't actually have to move anywhere in any shape or form. Um, what you're doing when you're planking is obviously the opposite. Gravity is trying to pull you and your hips down towards the floor. And what you're doing is holding a position that resists that. So the longer you hold it, the harder it starts to get. Those muscles are going to get tired. But instead of just working your abs, we've got abs working. We've got back muscles working to keep that nice straight shape, especially the lower back. We've got glutes working a little bit as well. So we're working a lot more of the core doing stuff like planking and stuff like that rather than rather than sit-ups. And so again, sit-ups, they, they do have their place in the circuit. They have a really good exercise for your abdominals. Um, but I, I guess the takeaway is avoid doing them probably every day. Um, I've seen people over the years trying like go to town on their abs and you see them all day, like all the time doing sit-ups and stuff like that. But it's it's constant flexion of your of your spine. It's straightening, it's bending, it's straightening, it's bending. Um, and eventually it can it can lead to postural problems. If all we do is sit-ups and strengthen the front of our body, these get tighter, we start to hunch forward, our backs used to be an arched. So we want that good, that good mix. Yeah. So sit-ups, maybe don't put them in every circuit that you do. But I would probably say that for most exercises, truth be told, now I think about it, keep it fresh, keep it interesting. Um, and like I've mentioned in a previous session as well, it's a good chance to explore and learn new exercises um, in a supervised format, I guess, really. You know, um, like I say, there used to be loads of people would come in the gym they look, they'd look dead shy, dead timid. They'd just use the, like the cardio equipment, the treadmills, the bikes. Then you sign them up to a couple of circuits, boot camps. They come in, they get used to doing kettlebell swings, medicine ball slams. Next time they come in the gym by themselves, they're much more confident going and doing that by themselves. You know, so it's a really good chance to explore different exercises and keep it fresh. Um, I always used to have like a list of different exercises for different body parts. And each week I would just pull exercises off those um like off of those lists rather than fall into the habit of doing sort of the same stuff week in week out it gets a bit repetitive both for yourself as an instructor and for the the client as well um okay so a little bit a little bit of a, a little bit of a tangent there in terms of sit ups and planks and the um just uh, worth clarifying the difference between abs and core because uh, you, you do see quite a lot. I'm doing a I'm doing a, a core workout and it's just it's just abs. You know your lower back's still going to be potentially quite weak. Um, okay, so sit ups. We are in a seated position. Most of them are heels on the floor or feet on the floor. Um, they're leaning back um, to, like I say, stretch the abs, and then they are sitting up again. Yeah, that's what they're doing. That's the movement, really. They're leaning back, and then they're sitting forward again. Yeah, so they're resisting gravity, controlling the movement on the way back, but also as they come to reverse the momentum and move forward again. Um, the reason that they've got their hands on their temples there isn't really to add anything to the exercise. It just stops you putting your hand behind your head and pulling it forward. Yeah. Putting more strain on your neck, more sort of curvature on your spine. Um, and potentially even sort of using your elbows to throw your momentum and throw, throw yourself back up. And if we do it that way, the muscle that we're trying to work hasn't done the work. Yeah. You've just relied on momentum. So it's almost like a wasted rep. You'd be better off stopping and having the rest, really. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's why the hands are on the temples. It's not around the back of the head. I also gave people the option of crossing them across their chest, you know, entirely up to you as an instructor. But that was the way that I would do it. So that's a little bit of a health and safety thing as well. So don't put your hands behind the head. In terms of technique and description, yeah, seated position, feet on the floor, 
um, leaning back and then sitting forward again and bringing almost your, your temple or your brow towards your knees and squeezing those abs as best you can. Um, in terms of progression, we can do what this lady in the back's doing. I don't know if I'm going to get a zoom in here or not, but you can see she's actually got her feet elevated. They are off the floor, which makes it a lot harder to balance. Um, so, I mean, if you've ever tried them um, or or have the, or next time you get the chance to try them, try one with your feet planted and one with your feet up and, and you will notice quite a big difference. Um, in terms of regression, um, I guess it could depend on why you are regressing it. It might be somebody's got a back problem or a um, sort of lower back problem and sitting down is hurting. You know, you could try a mat for a little bit of extra cushioning. Um, but again, what you could also do, what I've had people do before, is get them onto a, an, onto a weight bench, obviously for the padding under their bum. And then you can do a similar sort of thing. You can sort of lean back and then sit yourself up. You still get those abs working as well. Um, you can even get up onto the bench and put your feet up on the bench. Um, so you've got more of that sort of bent knee sort of stance that they've got going on there. Um, if it was just an ab thing, if it was an ab thing uh, and, it, and it was getting too, um, the, like, the strength wasn't there to get a full sit up, um, I would do um, what I used to call um, um, like modified crunches, really. So, what you would do, we we'll take this uh, this chap here as our example. So, he would start himself off, same position, but he's laid on the floor and his shoulders are on the floor. Yeah, so his feet are still planted. He's still sort of got contact under his bum with the floor, but his back and shoulders are on the floor as well. Put your hands nice and flat on your thighs and then just try and raise your shoulders, slide your hands up your thighs and then come back down. You might only get a tiny, tiny little movement. You might only up and then back down. But that's a good way to start recruiting those abs and getting them working as well. So it doesn't matter if you can't do a full sit up, you can lay down. Hands flat on your thighs. Obviously, you, your legs are still bent. And then you just try and, uh, try and time it with your breathing as well. So as you breathe out, just try and get a little bit of a little bit of a lift on your shoulders. And that starts to work those abs. And you can build forward into a um, sit-up or a full sit-up. Um, alternatively, you could do the opposite and kind of start from a much more seated position. So you're not sat back the way that he is, you know, just a lot more seated, you know, knees a little bit more in towards your chest and then gradually just lean back. Lean back till you feel those abs turn on and then come forward again. Yeah, you don't have to come all the way back and do a sit up. Just come back. Okay, abs are engaged, forward again. Abs are engaged, forward again. And just do those little micro, um, little micro reps really. Um, right, 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 right. Um, okay, so that's, I guess, the main, uh, the main points or the main takeaways from the um, sit-ups, really. Um, I think we've done regressions, we've done progressions, health and safety, like I say, don't uh, make sure you're not pulling your head. As with all of them, make sure you're breathing throughout. Equipment, you might want a, an exercise mat underneath. Um, and then, yeah, just think about those regression progressions. As I mentioned earlier on, the main muscle being used is the abdominals. Yeah. So the front of the stomach. So coming into planking, just to run through the same stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll zoom out again. So when it comes to planking, um, what you're looking to do is facing down towards the floor, come either onto your palms or your elbows, and your toes. So those are your points of contact with the floor, your elbows and your toes. And then you're trying to get a nice straight line from your heel all the way up through your legs, through your hips, up to your shoulder, and ultimately up to your head. That nice straight line, that nice flat body position. So you don't want your bum up in the air like that. And you don't want your hips dipping down on the floor like that. Yeah, it's going to put a lot of potential strain onto your back if you let your hips start to dip like that. Um, so 
Yeah, nice straight body line. Abs are still engaged. So core is still working. But as I mentioned earlier on, we've got um, your shoulders for a start off need to work a little bit more, but your glutes and some of those back muscles are going to come into play as well and help stabilize the whole movement. Um, in terms of making it easier, you could come to your knees and use your knees as the contact point rather than your toes. So you're making the body less long, which makes it a little bit easier to maintain. Same as doing the press-up. If you can't do a full press-up, where do you go from there? You probably come to your knees and try a press-up on your knees and do it that way. So you can come to your knees and try a plank, still get your core engaged. Um, you might, again, depend on what the reason is. I've had um, clients that have had um, carpal tunnel syndrome, stuff like that, arthritis, who can't balance on their wrists. So they tend to go down to their elbows anyway. So some might need to go to elbows. Some might be better off on their palms. It just depends on the individual. Um, in terms of making them harder, um, what do you think, guys? What do you think? How could, we make a, how could we make a plank any harder? An exercise where we aren't moving anywhere. Um, how do we make, how, how would we make it tougher for ourselves? So, if we were going to try and make a plank harder, you could go to um, putting a weight on their back. It wouldn't necessarily be the first place I would go to, but just thinking about the natural progressions that we've already mentioned. You know, I have, I wouldn't get like a 10 kilogram plate or something like that. But maybe it's just a one kilogram, maybe it's a, a 2.5 or 1.25 even, and just give them that little bit extra to work on. And again, like I, I'd be tempted to put it more on the on the top of the glutes or higher up on the glutes than right on the base of the spine as well, because that's where obviously your hips are going to try and dip the most, where gravity is going to have the strongest pull. So you can add a little bit of weight there as well, but you can you can add movement as well to a plank. So what you could do. Raise one arm, reach it out in front of you. Cut it back. Make sure that you're grounded again. Raise the other arm and put it out in front of you. So you're alternating from having four points of contact with the floor, two elbows and two feet, to three points of contact with the floor, but alternating. You can do the same thing with your feet. Stay on two elbows, but raise one foot, just so it's up and off the floor. Yeah? Alternate and do it on the other. Um that's probably where I would start in terms of progressing and regressing. It's like, yeah, you can do planks where you come from elbows up to palms and back down again all throughout the set. Um, you could do, um, potentially, you could do planks um, with your feet wider. Um, you can do planks where you jump in your feet, alternating from wide to in the center. There's, oh, there's so many different planks. We Again, we, we could be here all day, but... This is just a good place to go in terms of your own research as well. Um, if you wanted to do any of your own and explore different exercises, um, you may have seen some of these done on um, some of the media savvy workouts as well. Like I say, don't forget that most of the exercises on those videos are body weight as well. And, you know, there's always, I always make sure there's a little description of how to do the exercise. So that's on there. Um, so again, as always, check out those videos um, and get some inspiration for some different exercises from, from, from what we've used on there as well. Um, like I say, so many different types of planking you can do. Um, this is quite basic. You might get some individuals where planking is just, it's just no good. Um, again, people with a weak lower back, um, there's a fine line between, you know, my lower back is weak, so I need to do this to improve it, or my lower back's weak, and if I don't do something different, I'm actually going to hurt myself doing this, trying to improve it, you know? Um, so, again, comes down to the individual. Um, if somebody gets into a plank and after two seconds says to me, no, my back hurts, I'm like, right, let's find you something else to do. We'll strengthen those muscles in a different way. Um and that's a conversation for a different day as well, um, how, we could, how we could go about that. But yeah, when it comes to planking, um, if somebody can't do it in terms of they come into a plank, something hurts, right, okay, that's no good. Um, 
you could do different exercises again. Now you might do um one that I've called um not, not that I've called actually one that I've used that is called a like a walkout or a walkout. And um, so you stand again, feet about hip width apart, standing up nice and straight. You're gonna lean forward and put your hands on the floor, and then slowly baby steps, walk them out in front of you until you are in into more of a plank position. Yeah, you don't have to come all the way. I probably wouldn't encourage that you do come all the way because coming all the way, it just means you're in a plank and that, that position caused you pain before. So again, just come out till you feel your abs engage and then walk it back. Stand yourself up tall, quick little breath, come back down, hands to the floor, walking them out, almost to plank. Your abs are still going to work, but you don't have to come all the way to plank. Maybe just expose your lower, your lower back like that as well. So that's another way we can modify planking. Um, again, depending on what type of plank that is that we've that we've picked to start with in the first place as well. Um, Okie dokie. So yeah, um, muscles used, glutes, lower back, abs, obliques, um, a little bit depending on what we're doing. Um, progressions, regressions we've covered. Like say equipment, you might just want to use a mat. You might want to wait, like probably a little wait for, for to put on your lower back. Um, so yeah, not so much in terms of health and safety when it comes to planking. Again, as always, um, don't hold your breath. But other other than that, like I say, it's not like you've got a skipping rope that's flying all over the place. You're not really moving when it comes to um, when it comes to planking. I just obviously pick your surface, make sure that it's uh, nice and stable as well, and you're not going to slip. And again, if we're going to be down with our face that close to the floor. Obviously, in terms of hygiene, just try and pick somewhere where somebody hasn't been um, sweating two minutes beforehand and stuff like that. Um, okay, then. Okay, so we've had a look at some leg exercises. We've looked at some core exercises as well. Let's get a look at some um, upper body exercises as well. Like I say, you might decide that you want your circuit to be entirely lower body. You might want it to be all abs. You might want it to be all arms or upper body. Um, it's entirely up to you. Depends what sort of circuit you've got in mind. Um, but most circuits that you do, or certainly most of the ones that I've taught over the years, I tend to try and make it a um, like a full body experience sort of thing. You know, so it's um, it's not just focusing on one one body part or something like that. I want people to be able to work hard. Um, which to an extent requires our muscles still being fresh or having some fresh muscles to use after 20, 30 minutes as well. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So um, these two upper body exercises that we're looking at, we have got a regular, a regular push-up or a press-up, I guess you could say. They're the same thing, really. Um, and on the right-hand side, I'm demonstrating um, what, I guess I've always just called like a T press or a T push up, um, just because of the the T shape that you come into at the end of it as well. But we'll get onto that one in a, in a minute. Let's look at just a um, a regular press up for now. Um, so a, re a regular push up, press up, whichever one you're going to go with. To be honest, I'm probably going to drop between the two of them, and I've never really fully committed on one. Um, the aim is to work against gravity, to work your muscles these ones across your chest yeah so to work your chest plank position again but then i guess from pushing back up to a star position um i guess that's a that's a brief take on a press up if you were trying to coach it however and teach somebody how to do it you're going to need to give them a little bit more detail than that. So the way that I've always done it, again, is get somebody to just lay flat on their front, face down, um, get their hands or their palms flat on the floor by their sides, yeah? Just wherever feels strong, wherever feels natural, get them flat. And from there, aim to keep your body rigid, but push away from the floor. So you're not pushing away from the floor and your back's arching. So you're coming into like a cobra position, like a yoga position um, and opening your chest up that way. 
you are pushing away from the floor and your whole body's coming with it as well. Yeah. And you're just pivoting on normally on your toes. Yeah. So your toes are going to stay put. You bend your arms, your chest comes lower to the floor. You push and straighten your arms. And obviously your chest moves away from the floor. Those pec muscles contract and move inwards. Like I say, move inwards. Contract. Which helps with that, with that movement. Yeah. Back. Bars here with a weight on each end. You come down into the position, we get a stretch across there. And then as you push up again, these muscles contract. So we're getting a stretch and a contract. And we're doing exactly the same with the push up. Yeah. So again, um, working on those upper body muscles, mainly our pecs and our triceps as well. Because any pressing movement, especially obviously using the arms, a pressing movement requires the back of your arm to, fo uh, to, to function and to work and to activate. So we've got triceps and we've got pecs and to an extent the front of our shoulders as well. So pecs, delts and triceps as well. Okay, so that is muscles, muscles used. Yeah, uh, muscles used. Little bit of a little uh, like a description there as well in terms of laying yourself down. Get your hands by your side, normally somewhere between armpit and rib height. And um, get them flat. Push and make sure you just keep your body as straight as you can. That's the aim. Yeah, you don't want your shoulders to pull away from the mat, but your hips stay where they are. Um, in terms of making them easier, most natural thing that you're probably going to see is coming to your knees and trying to do them on your knees instead. Yeah, so you can do press ups on your knees. Just like with a plank, it makes the body shorter from your pivot point. It moves from your toes to your knees and makes the whole thing a little bit easier. Yeah, there's less of you to press because some of it is behind the pivot point, if that makes sense. Yeah, you're not pushing the weight of everything from the, the knees down, really. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier. Then if you wanted to make it harder, you can add weight. Again, I've seen people do press with a weight plate on their back. I've seen people do them with a weight vest on. Um, at the same time, I've seen people try and make them more explosive. So you do a press up um, and you'll maybe get one hand off the floor, come back down, press again, alternate, get the other hand off the floor. You might see people do them where you push up and clap. Yeah, clap push-ups. They're so much harder. Just like lunges, you're going from moving through a range you know, to pushing as hard as you can to get a bit of their time, be it jumping to swap your feet and swap your lunges or enough time to get up, clap your hands and get them back down to those clap press-ups. Um, so you could make them you could make them a good bit harder. You could even argue that these, this exercise on the right-hand side, the T press-up, is an advanced form of a regular press-up. You do a press-up, but then on the way up, as you reach full extension and come back to that plank position, like these guys are in here, you then raise one hand, bring it up towards the sky. Yeah? So you can see what, that's what I'm doing there. This hand's touching the floor, still trying to keep that nice straight body line from your heel up through your knee, through your hips, up your spine. But you've got that little bit of a twist on your upper body as well, which is going to um, bring in your obliques a little bit more. And like I say, you need to push harder to give yourself chance to get your arm up and back down as well so t, t push up i would say is a, is, a, is a very valid um progression of a regular push-up same as clap push-ups um same as one-handed push-ups you know um there's lots and lots of different types of push-ups you can do again um but yeah stick with the basic to start off with um in terms of health and safety again just make sure you're not really like arching your back um, make sure that you've got your, your, your hands in a position that feel comfortable as well. You don't want to be, um, obviously, you want your hands like that on the floor, pushing. I've seen people do press-ups with their hands like that, and they're doing press-ups like that. Um, that's just going to put a load of strain on your shoulder that you don't actually need to. Um, so good form and good technique when it comes to health and safety, as with all of these. Um, again, depending on what it is you're doing, I can't imagine you're going to be 
moving while you do a press up so you don't really need to worry about moving into somebody's space or anything like that so just health and safety considerations in terms of good technique and any equipment that you do use make sure it's not in the way of anybody else as well okay okay so um progressions regressions health and safety muscles used little description um and of course name of the exercise as well um a picture of the exercise. I'm just going to stick it out there now. If anybody wanted to and has the technical capabilities, I wouldn't know how you'd start. But if you wanted to use these pictures on your diagram, by all means do, or on your circuit card, by all means do. Um, as you'll see next week, a lot of people, and I did with my first circuit cards, um, tend to um, draw them be in sort of stick man form um or, or or slightly more slightly more advanced um drawings but yeah i was i was always a stick man kind of guy um if i couldn't draw it in stick man form i'd be finding a different exercise so um yeah um when it comes to our pictures if you want to use them by all means screen grab these print them whatever it is that you want to do um, maybe you're doing your circuit cards on 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 the computer anyway, be PowerPoint or whatever. So yeah, if you want to use them, I'm I'm more than happy for you too. Obviously, there's there's ones that I've got that were copyright, uh, not copyrighted anyway, and um, the other ones are just from our media savvy workout channel. So yeah, by all means, use them if you want to. Um, even if there's other exercises that you find, um, as you're looking through, you know, there's sessions that are just for legs and bone. There's some that are more full body. So, um, yeah, there's, like I say, plenty of hopefully inspiration for exercises in there for you as well, guys. Um, okay, then. So in terms of a T press up as well, we've mentioned in terms of it's like a regular press up, but rotating at the top. Um, there's a little bit more movement with this as well. So, again, I would just make sure that, you know, your space is nice and clear before you start doing these these exercises where we're moving and twisting and stuff like that. Um you might even want to make sure that you've got a good good grip with the floor as well. You know, you don't necessarily want to be up, push, twist into that position, in that position, and you're, um, you know, you're in socks like I am there, but I was on carpet. If you were on wood flooring, you could get into that position, your feet slip, and you're going to be potentially hurting yourself there. So same again, anything that you're trying to do, make sure you've got good grip and good contact with the floor first. Um especially before we pick up weights and start doing movement and explosive stuff. Um, okay, cool. So that's some some upper body exercises there. Um, I've gone backwards there. Um, so yeah, some upper body exercises. Again, a T press up is going to same, same muscles as your regular press up, but you're bringing your obliques in a little bit more, probably even your glutes because you've got that little bit of a twist going on in your lower back. Your, hip, your, your hips and your pelvis is going to twist a little bit as well. Um, and you definitely, definitely work the the shoulder that you're balancing on works so much harder than your shoulders normally do during a regular press up as well. Um, so again, that's a potential um, way to make push ups that little bit harder if you wanted to. Um, okay, so moving on to our um, more cardio based exercises, I guess you could say. Um, so so quite cardio based. These are the sort of exercises that if you are doing them, you are probably going to get out of breath before a particular muscle tires out. Yeah, it's, it's about increasing the demand for oxygen from your body and from your muscles and um, raising your heart rate and keeping it elevated as well. Um, and if you've, if you've ever seen this video that I did on the uh, Maybe You Seven channel, um, you can tell, but by the end of it, I was I was feeling it, you know. Um, didn't know if it was the it was the first nice day that year. Um, we were uh, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but it was the first nice day, summer as well. I was like, Do you know what? I'm filming outside, and um, yeah, um, got a good telling off of the neighbor's uh, neighbor's dog through the fence. Um, okay, then so high high knees and and mountain climbers are. Two forms of cardio exercise, yeah. So again, if we dial it right back, 
we come all the way back to walking. You know, we're moving. And that is enough to mean that our body is working harder than it is if we're not moving. You know, so walking um, can be dialed up to any of these really, you know, um, eventually. No, it's not necessarily the next step up, but we're getting the same effect, yeah? We're not going to work a particular muscle as hard as if we were targeting it directly, yeah? High knees is using your hip flexor a little bit to raise your knee, probably a little bit of your abs as well, but it's no way going to recruit them as hard as planking, sit-ups, Russian twists, or, or, or whatever you might be doing. Um, so yeah, these exercises, the main benefit is, is that cardio um, intensity. So again, you might look to do your circuit. You might do um, weighted exercise, body weight exercise, cardio exercise, weighted, body weight, cardio, weighted, body weight, cardio. So there's nine stations that could do you. Yeah. yeah. Weighted, body weight, cardio, three times through, rest. Have a couple of minutes. Do that three times through, circuit done. Yeah. So in that case, you maybe don't need nine exercises. So you don't need loads and loads of different exercises to get a good workout in as well. Normally, it's the repetition of doing a handful of exercises over and over again that really challenges the body and really breaks down um, muscles, which means that they need to come back stronger and that's how they get stronger and that's how they grow, partially anyway. Okay, so high knees is essentially running on the spot, but with each step, you're trying to get your knee as high into the air as you can. Alternating, driving through, almost like sort of trying to um, punch the air with your knees as, you, as you're going. Um, and again, mainly, you know, it's going to be a cardio exercise. Your heart rate's going to come up. Um, you might find that you work on your calves a little bit because you're probably going to be on your toes. Of course, you're, you're kind of running on the spot. But remember, it's that breathlessness that comes in. Of course, making them easier. Maybe, as you know, you don't have to worry about raising your knee so high. Um, again, bring that any further back, and we're pretty much back to walking on the spot anyway. Um, so somebody could just walk, you know, if, if high knees and the impact is no good, you know, can you get them just just walking, doing do, do laps of the gym or um, on a treadmill, if there's a treadmill handy? Or, or something similar, cross train a rower even is going to get them um, the same sort of benefit, the cardio benefit without that impact as well. So again, high knees, not necessarily for everybody. Um, same as this next one that we're going to look at in, in just a little bit. So remember, you always have, in terms of body weight exercises, if high knees, mountain climbers is too tough, you've always got, you know, Jumping jacks and you like it's like your star jumps to come back to, um. Again, marching on the spot doesn't have to be sort of running, sprinting, high knees, just marching on the spot, um, walking. Use a use a treadmill. Walking with a weight in each hand, you know, can make can be better for some than stuff like this that could be quite high impact. And um, so again, it might just depend on the individual how you need to change it, um, and how you need to make it easier in terms of making it harder you know this would be one of the exercises where i would just take 10 seconds stand in front of somebody and just say faster 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 just keep going keep going normally the last 10 or the last 20 seconds i would count it down of like 10 seconds to go come on work harder 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 um again high knees is difficult to make any harder because once your knees are as high as they'll go they're as high as they go but i would say that you could work harder in a similar way probably by doing sprints on the spot. Maybe your knees aren't coming quite so high, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Output should be 100% for however long that set is. That's going to be harder than just high knees on the spot at a manageable pace. Yeah, so ways that we can make it harder as well. Um, mountain climbers is very similar sort of thing, actually, now, I, now that I look at the two side by side. The only difference is mountain climbers, you are in a, in a plank position to start you off. So you're in that plank position to start off. Then um, you are bringing your knee up and across to the opposite elbow. Yeah, so up and across to the opposite elbow. So you're working those abs a little bit more, getting like a like a, um, a little bit. Of, it's almost like a mini crunch because you're bringing your knee across to your elbow. Your ab contracts a little bit. You're 
you, you sort of core contract a little bit. So we've got that little bit of a um, like like ab workout going on. Maybe it's even your obliques a little bit. Um, I've seen these done where instead of bringing your knee across to the opposite elbow, you bring your knee up high and wide to the elbow on the same side. Yeah, which is going to bring the squeeze down the outside of the body a little bit more and the contraction into your obliques and your sides a little bit more. So that could be a way to make them a little bit harder. Um, I personally think that doing these slower is harder. If you're taking your time, lift your foot, bend your knee, bring it across, squeeze your abs nice and slowly back to start, that's harder than just going like, almost like running on the spot, like swapping them over. It's really tough to do, sitting down and demonstrate that. But, you know, I've seen these done where like people are going so fast trying to just swap their feet over, get the knee across. That's more cardio. If you slow it down and focus on the movement more, it becomes much more of like an abdominal exercise as well. Um, so doing them that way brings the abs in a little bit more. Um so in terms of the, the uh, sort of description, doing the exercise, of course, that gives us a little bit of an idea where to start, how we could um, how we could coach somebody into the right position and to, um, you know, the right sort of movement and get them doing it, especially just from a couple of bullet points on our card. It might just be come into a plank position or come on here, um, get on your hands and toes or hands and feet. Nice straight body line, make your body as long as you can, and then put one knee to your opposite elbow, and then return to start and swap. Four bullet points there to just get somebody doing um, these mountain climbers, which again might save you coming across from the other side of the the sports hall where you're coaching, you're showing somebody else how to do something something else. Um. So yeah, exercise use mountain climbers a lot a lot more core than high knees. Um. Again, health and safety considerations, just make sure, you know, the floor's not wet before you start jumping and leaving one point of contact with the floor with your feet. Um, make sure that you've got the space around you um, and just, again, be aware what else is going on around you. Um, obviously, make sure you stay high enough. It sounds daft, but, you know, depending on your proportions, your knees can be pretty close to the floor when you do these as well. So watch out for that as well. Um but that's that's probably the biggest ones when it comes to um when it comes to that health and safety. The main thing really is just making sure that these are only these exercises are suitable for the individual. I guess really, um, if somebody's like I say doing high knees and running on the spot, and they've got a bad back or a bad knee, that might make things worse. Yeah, so making sure that we're sort of working to the uh, the individual's levels is is a massive part of health and safety as well. Um, okay, so that was uh, that was our high knees and our mountain climbers. I'm just going to uh, go back and make sure I've touched on everything. So names, muscles, picture of the exercise. Like I say, if you want to do a stick man, that is totally cool. If you want to borrow these pictures, then do. Um, brief description, how to carry them all out. Uh, health and safety considerations and how to make them easier or harder. Why have you stopped skipping? There we go. Okay, so yeah, if you wanted to make things easier or harder, of course, we could use some of those um, some of those points that we've just mentioned and just being over there. Um, okay, so we've looked at lower body or quads and glutes, definitely, definitely quads and glutes. Um, with some cardio sort of based exercises core exercises um, and upper body exercises now as well. So we've already got, you know, a good mix. Um, you could pick our exercises we looked at. We've looked at eight exercises so far. You know, we've got two, two for quads, two for abs, two for upper body, two that are more cardio-based. There's eight exercises there. Um, granted, we need, we need two that have got fitness in. For, for our case, our fitness equipment in, sorry, um, for our workbooks and for our circuits. But if you were just looking to put the circuit together, there's eight exercises. You know, you could do, um, go through each slide, do the first exercise. So you do squats, sit-ups, push-ups, high knees, and then you come back around to do lunges, planking, push-ups, uh, T-push-ups, and mountain climbers. Eight exercises, good little balance of structure, 
Um, like I say, eight exercises. That's at most what an eight-minute circuit. It could be done three times in jail I was in throb, 25 minutes. You know, you could whip through that three times, 25 minutes, done. Some people spend more time driving to the gym than uh, 25 minutes. Um, so, again, it's just thinking about how we're using that time as well. Um, these circuits might, circuit training and having the, the capability to do it at home might save you that journey to the gym every night or stop time being so much of an issue. You know, if we can do it at home and we can do it fast and sort of hit the ground running with it. Uh, okay, then, guys. So we've got the last two to look at. Um, like I mentioned, there are so many different exercises we could look at. We could be here again all day looking at different exercises that we could do. Um, but I've just got a uh, a couple more to look at, and then, like I say, I'll hand over to you to do as much additional research as you'd like to. Be it checking out the media savvy channel see what other exercises are on there or like i say it might be a case of um looking on youtube on your pinterest instagram that sort of thing what different exercises are on there have you found um but make sure that we've got a good you know couple of coaching points we know we will make it harder and easier um you know, I would try and avoid just putting an exercise on a circuit because you've seen an influencer do it and it looks cool. And then somebody says to you, oh, I can't do that. Yeah. And it's like, I need something I need something a bit easier, a bit harder to do. And, you know, you might not have that information because you've just sort of done what you've seen somebody else doing as well. So um, familiarise yourself with exercises before you try and coach other people through them, I guess, um, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, okay, so the last two that we've got on here... The last two that we've got on the screen um, are um, mainly um, glute dominant exercises. So really good for the bum um, and a lateral lunge, a little bit sort of like the outside of your glute and the outside of your, your thigh and outside of your quads a little bit as well. Um, so to look, at a, um, to look at the glute bridge first, um, so in order to get into that position, we are laid down. Um, on our backs, we put our feet flat and get our heels in nice and close to your bum. Yeah. And then dig through your heels, push your hips towards the ceiling. And again, almost like a revert or like an inverted plank, you're trying to get a nice straight body line from your knees down to your shoulders because you've lifted your hips and trying to keep your hips lifted and go against gravity, your glute muscles are going to be engaged and they're going to be tensing. Yeah, you relax your glutes, your hips will drop and you're not in that glute bridge anymore. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure. The reason that we bring our heels in close to our bum before we push is for this end position here. So you want to make sure that once you've pushed up your knees are over your ankles yeah your knees are over your ankles you don't want to be um like i say in this position but your feet are out there because that takes so much of the tension away from your glutes that's more of a hamstring hold actually so you can work your hamstrings that way by you know i've done these where i'll come into this position but then walk your feet out a bit straighter and then walk them back in back to this position as well that works your hamstrings but if we were going for a glute bridge to work those glutes, this is the position that, we'll, that we want to end up in. So to start us off, lay on our back, heels in towards your bum, and then push. Um, the wider your feet are, I mean, I tend to feel wider my feet are, the more I feel those glutes activate as well. You can say that my feet aren't together. Um, might be a little bit of trial and error for yourself. Um of of your clients or for your members or whatever it is, but that would be where I would start. Feet outside shoulder, outside hip width, close to your bum, dig through your heels and push up. Nice straight body line. Um, if you wanted to make it easier, you know you could just worry about just trying to lift your hips a little bit rather than coming all the way up and holding. Or you could do pulses. So your bum touches the floor and then comes up into this position and then slowly back down and then back up to this position. Yeah. So it's like a thrusting movement rather than um, 
rather than like up and hold. That might be 40 seconds might be a long time to hold it, but if you're up and down, your glutes are getting that little bit of a rest throughout the set as well. Um, in terms of making it harder, you know, you could make it so, right, it is a hold. Up, hold, don't let your hips drop. Um, you can even, um, you could do it two ways, actually. You could do like the, do, do, do the pumps and make them harder by adding, adding a weight to the pelvis. So put a, put a weight just over your pelvis. Um, so it's sort of above your glutes, really, because that's where you want the extra weight above your glutes, so your glutes need to work harder. So the extra weight above your glutes, you can add a weight plate, a kettlebell, whatever, um, and either do the pumps, and that makes them harder, or up and hold, and that makes that harder as well. So you can add that weight. You can even do them where you come into this position and then take it in turns to lift one foot. So you've only got one foot on the floor. That side of your glutes got to work harder. Down, swap, lift the other one. Now the other side's working harder. Yeah. So, um, yeah, different ways that we can make it harder. Um, and a couple of ways we could look to make it um, a little bit easier, a little bit more manageable as well. Um, okay, then coming across into the, um, the last one that we're going to look at today, um, and that is the lateral lunge. So similar to the starting lunge that we looked at at the start of the day session, yeah, this one on the right, all we're doing, instead of stepping forwards or, or backwards, as I mentioned, we're coming sideways. Yeah, so we're bringing a little bit more sideways movement into our into our circuit and into our routine. Um, and hopefully into our lives, we are designed to move in a lot of different ways. Um, and the way that life generally has us go is in a straight line, forwards, sometimes backwards. We don't move side to side so much. And that's granted, we're not, we're not part crab. Um, but at the same time, we have those those movements. We have those ranges of motion. You know, our hips and our legs do come to the side as well as forwards and backwards due to that hip joint um, and the range of motion that we get. Um, so it pays to move through as many different ranges as possible as we can um, for that good, balanced, holistic sort of training approach. Um, like I say, you could be pretty strong moving forward, going up steps, squats um but if you don't strengthen the other muscles as well again you can get a little bit of a muscular imbalance you say quite a lot in 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 sportsmen um not so much the the high paid professionals because of course they've got pts and they've got the best training and the best recovery and the best strength and conditioning um that that, that money can buy but um just people that play a lot of football or do a lot of running or even like rugby and stuff like that. Um, the quads get a lot of work. The hamstrings sometimes get a lot of work, but the inside and the outside muscles of the knee don't. So that's where, again, moving laterally can help strengthen different parts of our body or strengthen our knees, moving in a different direction in, in that particular case. It's like, yeah, your, your knees can be as strong as they want in a couple of directions, but if something knocks it, from this side, is it just going to crumble? Yeah, so again, we can help that just get that balance a little bit more. Um, so what we're doing, um, again, starting feet hip width apart, same as we do with a lot of exercises, but then you are going to bring one foot, step it out to your side, not necessarily as far as you can, but you can afford a bit more of a stretch because you're not bending your rear knee this time. You know, on the original lunge, I just take forever every time, um, you bend in your rear knee, whereas with this lunge, this other this side knee is going to stay straight. So you're going to get a little bit of a stretch on the inside of your groin as well. Yeah. So if you're alternating, you've got the outside of one thigh working and the inside of the other thigh stretching. So when you swap over and do it the other way, it's opposite. The outside of this thigh will be working and the inside will be stretching. So those muscles are getting a little bit more work, which again can 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 um help us in, in, in those day-to-day -day movements. Um, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, you're working the outside of your glute and the outside of your thigh a lot more um, than, a, than you are on a regular lunge. 
So that's that's probably the biggest difference. Um, same again, you're looking to keep both heels in contact with the floor. Bend. So, right, okay. So, yeah, you've, you've brought one foot, put it out wide. From there, lean onto your other leg. So not the one that you've just put out wide. Lean onto your other leg. So you can see here, I've put my left leg out wide. Um, and I've stepped across onto my right. And I've come down. I say as low as you can. Um, so we've got... Um, Right, okay, so your back foot is going to point in the same direction that you're facing. Your other foot is going to point not straight, not out to the side, but somewhere in between. Yeah, so that's what I've got going on with my feet there, and that's just to protect your knee. So I've got this foot pointing straight forward pretty much from where I started, and then the other toe is pointing out 45 degrees off at an angle. And then as I come across, obviously I've planted my foot Pointing in that direction, as I bend my knee, I'm going to make sure my knee bends in that direction as well. So my knee should track out over my toes. It shouldn't bend in a different direction. Yeah. Um, and that, and that's, that movement should come quite naturally once you start to bend that knee. Um, make sure that you maintain a position where you can push back through your heel. Like a normal lunge, you're then going to straighten your leg and push back to your start position. And then... As with normal lunges, again, you might choose to um, do however many on one leg before you switch, then do the other leg. Or if it's a circuit, you might alternate. So do one leg and then swap, do the other leg. Um, and then when you get to the end of the set, you've had a good mix, really, haven't you? You've had a good um, balance. And both legs have hopefully done the same amount of work. Um, if you were just doing them as like normal sets in the gym, yeah, you could get away with, right, okay, I'm going to do me 10 on one leg, then I'll do 10 on the other. Um, personal preference there, really. Um, okay, so little description of how to do it. We've mentioned, um, of course, the muscles that we're going to use. As I say, use these pictures if you want. Um, in terms of regression, regression, you could probably um, narrow the stance a little bit. might be a little bit easier. Not so much of a stretch, so you can narrow the stance so your feet aren't as wide apart from each other. Um, you can narrow the stance. Like I mentioned earlier as well, you could use those um, TRX ropes or those suspension ropes from the ceiling uh, so that, you know, if you do get stuck, you can give yourself like a little bit of a pull uh, and help yourself get back up as well. Of course, to make them harder, I would be trying to um, sink lower. I would be trying, like, like, get more of a bend in that knee that I'm bending. Um, or, again, just add a little bit of weight, give them a weight plate to hold into their chest or um, a couple of dumbbells for, for down at either side. Uh, depends how, how well balanced they are, really. Are they using their hands for balance? Or can we free them up for, for something else? Um, okay, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much everything for those exercises. Um that I've thought of, I am going to give you just two minutes and have a think. Um, of course, if there is anybody watching live, then by all means, pop it in the chat. But just have a little bit of a think of maybe there's any exercises that you've come across before and you don't know what muscles they work or how you can make them easier or, or harder or, or anything like that. So just open it up a little bit for just a couple of minutes. Give you time to think. Um, I'll be right back. And then if you've got any questions, um, we'll, we'll battle them off. Um, okay, guys, have a little thing.
Oh, we've got a little visitor coming to say hi as well. Hey, boy. Hello. There you go, little uh, little cameo for you this morning. Um, right, guys, cool. So, so yeah, um, that, that's been um, a look through. I mean, what? That's just ten. Hey, boy. That's just ten um, body weight exercises that work a good number of different muscle groups through a different range. Many, many different ways we can make things harder, make things easier, and sort of tweak tweak things based on based on the individual and um, so ideally we should be able to find a little bit of something for for anybody that, that that might turn up and to be able to um match all manner of different um ability levels and and and, and support that's needed um and like i said guys there's so many more out there as well um like I say, there's 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 loads more that I've done on um, Media Savvy's page. You've got, you know, I'm just going to chuck some names out there in case you do want to go and research some different ones. Um, and in fact, I'll also put them in the chat. Um, so additional exercises could include um, so burpees. If you ever heard of burpees before, um, I mean, even even if you haven't, check them out. Um, so we've got burpees. We've got um, what else could we have? We could have bicycle um, bicycle abs. So we're laying on our back, elbows coming across to the opposite knee, and um, getting that twisting at the movement. We might do some Russian twists. Um, Could do some, uh, like I say, Russian twists. It might be, uh, what else could we do? Um, I've, I've done tuck jumps before, literally just jumping on the spot and tucking your, tucking your knees up. That's harder than you'd think. Um, I'm just thinking about um, body weight exercises while I'm on. Um, obviously, different press-ups. Um, I used to do one called, the one that I used to call hot hands. So you come into a plank. And then instead of holding it, you're doing shoulder taps as fast as you can. Yeah, so it could be hot hands and um, slash shoulder taps. Mm -hmm. uh, sprints on the spot. You might want to do sprint on the spot. Um, Look at different types of squats, either wide squats, feet like together squats, single leg squats, um, all of that sort of thing. You could do if you've got boxes that you could use, and um, you're still using body weight, but like step ups onto a box or a bench or something like that is still a body weight exercise. Um, until you go obviously add an extra weight and stuff like that. Um, used to do. Uh, walkouts, that's the one to look at. Walkouts, where you stand in, put your hands on the floor and walk out into a plank position and then come back. Um, plank jacks, so you're in a plank position, but your feet are jumping in and out like you're doing jumping jacks. Um, I see so many, so many. Um, and then just, like I say, um, kickbacks, donkey kicks, um, Fire hydrants, um, all for glutes, just different exercises for glutes, moving your glutes through different ranges, activating them. Um, have I even put jump, jumping jacks on there? No, I haven't. Jumping jacks, like I say, um, could be on there. Um, skaters, skaters. So you're like bending your knees as if you're coming into a squat, but then you will um, jump out of the squat and spin 180 degrees and land and then jump and come back the way you've just come. I used to like them. Um, 
thinking about the lateral movements, you might do like some side skaters where you're jumping from one leg, jumping across to the other, but keeping it nice and quick. Um, might do that. Uh, in terms of abs, you might do leg raises, um, scissor kicks, or flutter kicks for abs. So either, so you lay it on your back, lift your two feet, put them down again. Yeah, that's leg raises. If you lift your feet and you're swapping one over the other and alternating, that's scissor kicks. And if you wanted to do flutter kicks, raise your two feet and then keep them both above the floor and you're doing just small little kicks with both feet off the floor. So that's flutter kicks and that, that would be uh, an ab exercise as well. Yeah, so like I say, there's so many out there. Um, you'll never know them all. I don't know them all. I don't know if anybody knows them all. There are, like I say, in fact, I'll put it in there. So bodyweight exercises can also be known as calisthenics. So if you wanted to go and find any, you know, um, fitness personalities that specialize or sort of mainly talk about or share bodyweight exercises, that's that's a word to be looking out for and potentially searching. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of anybody specific that specializes uh, in bodyweight exercises. Um, let's just have a look. Bodyweight exercise. Um, specialist. I'm not saying guru. Everybody's a guru these days on social media. Um, But yeah, I've literally just typed in typed in their um, bodyweight exercise specialist and, and they are out there. Um, I knew they would be. I just couldn't think of the name of any off the top of my head. But again, if that's the sort of exercise that interests you or you'd like to explore it a little bit more or find out a bit more, again, by all means, go, go off and feel free to do as much additional research as you want. Like I say, you might find a couple of exercises that I've never heard of before. You know, you might come back to me with stuff that I've never seen, never done, haven't done for a long time. I certainly haven't thought of this morning as well, you know, because there's been a, a, a few bodyweight exercises over the years. So, um, yeah, like I say, keep um, keep exploring, keep trying to check out, like I say, different options and um, different exercises, especially as, you know, you look to sort of grow your exercise library or your exercise database, you know. If you're going to have 10 exercises in every circuit, just knowing 20 exercises, you're going to go through them pretty quickly and get bored of them pretty quickly. So it pays to keep expanding and, and I'll always be sort of exploring different exercises and stuff. Of course, always be critical. Don't just take for granted what somebody says, especially on like Instagram or Facebook. Um, you know, anybody can post anything on those um, platforms. So just, you know, everything with a, with a, with a pinch of salt. And as always... If you've got any questions of anything that you see, you don't know how credible it is, whether it's something you'd be sort of paying any heed to at all or not, fire it over. I'm happy to have a read through an article or a, through through a piece or some research or whatever and, um, you know, extrapolate and take away from that what, 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 what I can and what I will. Um, so, yeah, like I say, um, that option's always there as well. If you see something that you're not sure and you want us to have a little bit of like a, uh, like a look at it for you first. It's no problem at all. Um, right, guys, right, right, right. Just want to think about this, I uh, say homework for the week, this plan for the week. Um, so like last week, become familiar with the two following workbooks. So using tools and equipment for a practical activity and use of materials in a practical activity as well. Those are... Um, both in the um, description section below today's video. So right at the top, it says workbooks. Those two links will take you to the workbooks. Um, so yeah, in those workbooks this week, 
um, just get familiar with them, have a look through. So like I mentioned last week as well, um, and I want you to start thinking about your own circuit training session now. Um, so the exercises that you plan to include and the equipment that you're planning to include as well. So what exercise are you doing? What equipment would it need? Um, if any at all. Yeah. And then next week, and we're going to complete some of the workbooks um, plan the design of your circuit training cards as well. So we're taking our time with these. We don't need to sort of rush them. Um, otherwise, you know, we'd have done them week one. Um, we can take our time. We can have a thing. We can make a circuit that sort of makes sense to you. Um, and, you know, might well be beneficial to you at home. Or, you know, if you maybe you're, you're sort of considering a... Um, sort of move into the health and fitness um, industry. Um, it could be a good good chance for you to sort of get, um, obviously, learning about, obviously, like pros and cons of um, using certain kit and how to progress and regress things because certainly as a personal trainer, you do that nigh on all day, every day, but having to adapt really quickly and, again, it might not necessarily be progression or regressing strictly, but there's no to say that your client's not going to come through the door and say, I've put me back out at work today. Can I do, can I do them squats that we had planned, but I want to do something, you know? Or it might be, oh, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit a little bit sick today. I still want to do something, but can we avoid jumping and running and stuff like that? There will be times you need to think on your feet a little bit. So the more you can be prepared for that, the better. If you know and have it written on your card, right, to make it easier, I do this. To make it harder, we can do this. It can it can save you need to um, do it on the spot as well. So, yeah, good chance for you to start having to think about what equipment you're going to use and, of course, what exercises you're planning on including as well. Um, so, as always, guys, um, please don't forget to um, fill in that survey. So it is linked in the description, as always. So if you... Go to the YouTube video, click the little drop-down arrow where the title is. If you look under workbooks, it says um, survey. So if you click that survey, as with all the previous sessions we've done, um, you click that survey, it'll take you where you need to put in your answers, then just hit submit, um, and that'll come straight back to us. You don't need to download it, fill it in, save it, email it back, any of that. Um None of that faff on. Just nice and simple. Click the link, put in your answers, hit submit. Jobs are good. And it's not even 30 seconds, guys. Um, so, yeah, please make sure that you do it for today's session and for the previous sessions that have run so far as well. Um, as always, if you're missing any links, any workbooks, even just surveys, let me know and I'll, I will I'll get links across to you. Um, so you can get caught up and just so you've got everything, hopefully all in one place, nice and easy, and you can keep on top of it. Um, so yeah, guys, please don't forget to do that survey and go back and any that you might have missed so far. Um, yeah, so um, if you notice as well, just underneath that survey, there is the um, link for the workout video as well. So... I've tried to pick a um I've tried to pick one for you this week that of course has as many different body weight exercises in as possible, really. Um those two seconds. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, you can go on, you can have a look. Um and like I say, either give the workout a go. You know, like I say, we've had we've had a nice weekend, but the weather's back to normal today. We've we've got rain over this way, so I'll be exercising in the house today, I imagine. Um it's nice to have those options and something that doesn't require any equipment, something that your own circuit cards will be able to help you with later on as well, once they're done. You know, you don't need to think about oh, what we're gonna do today, it's there. Just do what's on the cards. Change the order up, maybe keep it a little bit fresher for yourself, keep it interesting. You know, do you feel a difference if you go from you know, high knees into lunges compared to squats into lunges. You know, what's the difference? How does it how does it affect your body? How does it challenge you? Um, and then you can start to get an idea how, you know, pairing certain exercises up will um, the effect that that will have as well. Um, 
so yeah, guys, even if you're not particularly fancy in doing the workout that I've picked it for the uh, pick for the day, click that link still in the description and it'll take you straight to our um workout playlist. So you can pick an abs workout if you want, or you can do a chair-based exercise, or um there's one video where I've actually used a bit of equipment. So I've just grabbed a couple of tins of soup out the cupboard or something that we probably all got laid around or certainly something you could substitute with something that you've got yourself, you know, 99 tin, uh, tin of, 99p tin of soup or a 20 pound kilogram. I know which one I'm going to pick, um, you know, or a 20 pound uh, kettlebell or um, like a dumbbell or something. So yeah, lots on the, um, lots on the channel. Um, definitely check it out. And even if it is just for a little bit more inspiration for some body weight exercises, like I say, I did so many because when I was filming those workouts, I wanted them to be suitable and relevant to people that were stuck at home that didn't have access to a load of kit or a gym or a load of equipment. So um, there's plenty of bodyweight exercises in there, guys. So by all means, like I say, have a little look through and um, pick out what you fancy. If you see any exercises that you like that you're not sure, you know, what muscles is it working? How would you coach somebody to do it? Um, again, let me know. Drop me an email. Drop me a message. Um, and I'll give you as much info as I can, really. Obviously, probably stuff that I've already got got down if I've put them in the, mute, in the fitness videos as well. So, yeah, no problem at all there, guys. If you do want to get in touch about any exercises that you're not sure about, like I say, if you've seen any on the channel or whatever it is or or anywhere, really. Um, but yeah, guys, please don't forget to do that survey. Get familiar with your workbooks um, even more so this week because we're going to start to um, plan them next week and fill them in a little bit. Um, of course, you've probably already got it because I've been sending session links out, but you may um, not already have my email. So that is in the, that's obviously on the screen right there. Um, as in, and is in the description below the video as well. So again, missing workbooks, surveys, sessions, let me know and I'll get them to you. Um, so other than that, guys, um, that's definitely plenty for you to go away and digest for the rest of the day um, and throughout the, throughout the next week as you are sort of start thinking about your own circuit, what exercises, what of them need equipment, what is that equipment, which of them are body weight, you know, I'm thinking about some of those other bits we've been talking about as well. Um, we will, of course, be back next Monday, um, 10 o'clock till, till 12, 12.30. Of course, that includes the fitness video at the end. Um, well, like I say, we'll be looking at more cert circuit card examples. So examples that we've had from learners in the past, um, see how they chose to set theirs out, you know, be it use of color, black or white, lots of text, more pictures. People are different um, and people's styles are different. So, um yeah, just, just a recap on the stuff that we sort of would like to put on there. Number in the circuit that it is, picture of the exercise, the name of the exercise, a little description, uh, health and safety considerations, and how would you progress it, make it harder or, or easier, um, as well as any equipment that you would use as well. So those are the categories that we're thinking about. Um, like I say, we'll be back next week and we can start getting some things actually down on paper um, and can start planning your own once we've looked at some more examples. Uh, okay, then I'll, uh, I'll let everybody get away. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. I hope everybody has a good week. I hope the weather picks up again um, and like that's not like summer done. Uh, I hope we get there in the end, but I'm sure we will, guys. So until next week, stay safe, look after yourself and, and those around you. Um, thank you for learning and spending your time with Media Savvy. Um, and until next Monday, guys, when we will be back, take care. See you later. Bye.